So over the last few years, we've experienced a lot of division in our churches. Why is that? Well, because a lot of men and women have started to stray away from God's word. They'll look at the Bible and only believe the things that they want to hear or the beliefs that fit in with their personality or their lifestyle. So in other words, they want the Bible to fit in with their lifestyle instead of changing their lifestyle to fit with the Bible. And this can be very dangerous, especially among young Christians. So today I'm going to talk about three false teachings that all Christians should avoid. So now if it's your first time on our channel today, this is Daily Bread with Dylan, and we post a lot of Christian content on shorts, as well as some of these longer length videos. If you could, please give me a subscribe and drop a comment and a like for me. It really does help me. And turn on post notifications so that you don't miss our next video. Now let's see. The Bible is very clear when it talks about false teachings. In 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 through 2, the Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. So see, it was happening in those times just like it's happening today. So how do you know what's the truth and what's a false teaching? Well, you have to test it. And how do you test it? You test it by having knowledge of the Bible. So that's why it's so important for us Christians to study our Bible daily and really come to an understanding of the Bible through prayer and asking for understanding and knowledge so that we can test these teachings and we will be able to see what is true and what isn't true. So let's start off with number one. See, there's this idea that all Christians should be healthy and wealthy according to God's will. And that's just not true. Now, of course, God does promise us peace and he does want us to be prosperous. But just because you're a Christian doesn't mean your life is going to be perfect. The only time that happens, we know as Christians, is when we get to heaven. And the Bible says we'll face trials and tribulations. In John 16, verse 33, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So we'll have troubles and we'll have our trials and tribulations. But people who believe in that false teaching will be deeply hurt by this teaching. Because they might be praying, Lord, please take this, please take this away from me. Please make me healthy. Please bring me wealth. And they go to their preachers and say, hey, it's not working. What's going on? And their teachers say, well, it's because you got to have more faith. You just don't have enough faith. And you know, you can't use God like a genie. He's not some magical genie that you say, okay, God, I need money. And he goes, here's money. That's not how God works. You have to go to him and humbly ask him. See, a lot of people in the Bible had to ask for things mul multiple times before they were either given to him or he was quiet or he said no. So what's the point of prayer? Well, there's a little bit more to it than just getting exactly what you want because you asked God. Even the son of God, Jesus himself, prayed to God and he didn't get what he asked for. In Luke 22 verse 42, it says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. So Jesus didn't seek him and say, Lord, take this away from me. I don't want to die on the cross. I don't want to do this anymore. And God was just like, yes, your wish is my command. He asked God and he said, not my will, but your will. And we all know how that story turned out. God's will prevailed because we needed that. God knew what we needed. We needed that savior. So he gave us that and he didn't answer that prayer. So it's not saying that you can't ask for anything. It's not saying that you can't ask for money or saying that you can't ask for good health. But sometimes he'll be quiet or he just simply says no. And it's for a reason. And you may not understand that reason and you may never understand that reason. Let's look at Job for a second. He lost everything. But in the end, God used it to draw Job closer to him. And he not only restored everything that he took from Job, but he gave him more than what he had before. And Job even said, after all those trials and tribulations that he went through, in Job 42 verse 5 we read, My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. So through those trials and tribulations, before that, he heard God, he knew he was there. But after, he not only heard him, but he saw him. So there was this deeper relationship with them. And sometimes God uses the pain and suffering to teach us something. And when we endure it, we draw closer to him. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 through 10, it says, 
But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that in Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, God knows your every intention, and he knows your heart. Be content with what you have going on. 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 through 11, it says, But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and to many foolish, harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all of this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. See, God wants you to be prosperous. He's not saying that you can't be rich, but it's his will, not your will. And put your focus on him and things above because everything on this earth, money and all those things, it's temporary. What we get in heaven is eternal. Now, number two, when teachers and preachers place extra rules in order to be saved. For example, and we're only gonna go over two today because there's many that we could go over. Some say every Christian should speak in tongues in order to be saved, or you have to be baptized in order to be saved. The Bible is very clear on this. It is by grace through faith that we are saved. In Ephesians 2 verse 8 through 10, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now it's not saying grace plus speaking in tongues, or grace plus baptism, or grace plus etc. It is by grace through faith. Romans 10 verse 9 through 10 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And then we also read further into Romans 10 verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. See, God judges only righteously. And the only one who can see a person's heart and intentions. Remember what Jesus said to the criminal next to him on the cross? Remember that the criminal didn't speak in tongues or neither was he baptized. See, Luke 23, verse 39 through 43, it says, One of the criminals hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered to him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So he was saved because he professed that Jesus was Lord and he believed him in his heart. Now, you're going to ask me, okay, Dylan, you said you don't have to be baptized. Should I be baptized? Yes, because you should want to obey God. And the Bible asks us to. In Acts 2 verse 38, it says, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what about tongues? We all have different gifts, but none have to do with salvation. And Paul is very clear. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4 through 10, it says, there are different kinds of gifts but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of work, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the spirit of a message of wisdom, to another of knowledge by means of the same spirit, to another faith of the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. So we're all going to have different gifts. So you don't have to have 
speaking in tongues as your gift in order to be saved. There are many gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if you are a Christian and you believe, you have the Holy Spirit with you and your gift is there. And it will be revealed to you in the proper time, in God's time. Now let's move on to number three. Hyper grace and love that leave out holiness and righteousness. This can also be dangerous and it can lead a lot of people to believe that they can be Christian and do whatever they want because their sins are already forgiven and God is love. And this misuse of scripture, if you live the way you do, it is, it's not, you're not a real Christian. Romans 6 verse 1 through 2. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died in sin. How can we live in it any longer? And then also in Romans 6 verse 14 through 18. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as an obedient slave, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or obedient, which leads to righteousness, you have been set free from sin and became slaves to righteousness. See, you are free from sin if you obey God in righteousness. Yet many believe they are saved. But Jesus said himself in Matthew 7, verse 21 through 23, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform miracles? Then I will say to them, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. So don't be deceived by these false preachers and teachers that teach things that fleshly nature wants to hear. The great falling away is when the majority of the church starts to justify sin and demonize those who speak against it. And now this isn't me being judgmental. It's the truth and only the truth will set you free. And Christian change in your life only happens when you view the Bible in a balanced and truthful way. Now remember, God loves you. I love you. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.